Thank you all so much for coming. My name is John Tillman. I'm the CEO of the Illinois Policy Institute, and we're very excited to be here with you today uh, to release our fifth annual Alternative Budget, Budget Solutions 2014. And I'd like to thank in particular Representatives Morrison, Ives, and Kay for joining us uh, here with us today to talk about various aspects of this proposal. Uh, tough sledding for the state of Illinois in terms of our fiscal health. For year after year, we've not been solving our problems. What Budget Solutions 2014 does is lay out a framework in which to solve those problems. In putting that framework together, we've focused on three key constituent groups. Those three groups are public employees who receive their paychecks and benefits from a government paid for by taxpayers. The second key constituent group, of course, are people who depend on government for government services, particularly the poor and disadvantaged Medicaid recipients, uh, children in our K-12 through educational system, and of course young adults in higher education. And the third a key constituent group, of course, is taxpayers who pay for all of that. I've just suffered two large tax hikes, the 2011 tax hike and of course the payroll uh, tax hike in January of this year at the federal level. That's the equivalent of two weeks of pay that have been taking away, taken away from our state's taxpayers. So the problems are great. Taking a balanced approach is necessary. Uh, we've worked closely with Representative Ives, uh, Kay, and Morrison on these solutions, and we're very happy to have them here with us today and very proud of their leadership, courageous leadership, on these issues. In terms of the pension proposal that is part of our overall budget solution, today we're presenting the first pension uh, plan that actually solves the pension crisis. Uh, we reduced the unfunded liability in 2014 by $46 billion, from $101 billion down to $55 billion. We reduced the state's contribution in terms of the annual pension payment from $6.7 billion down to $4.7 billion. That's a $2 billion reduction in terms of the state's pension payment. Most importantly for state workers and government workers in general is that this is the first plan that gives workers control of their retirement earnings going forward by converting them to a 401k style program. But most important, it protects what they've already earned. This is the only plan that protects what they've earned for current workers and protects the retirement of current retirees and yet gives them control going forward from this date forward. And of course, as I noted already, uh, what we do is reduce that annual pension payment and then we reduce the unfunded, we pay off rather the unfunded liability over time by eliminating the pension ramp and having a straight payment uh, of $4.7 billion per year. The problems are huge for the state. Pension reform alone will not do it. And that's why the totality of Budget Solutions 2014 is so important and deserves a serious consideration. The other thing our total plan does is pay down the unpaid past due debt, which is now around $9 billion by 2016. And we also uh, repeal the 2011 tax hike by July of 2014. So a lot of information, a lot of work there. It's a big document. You'll take some time to review it. But first up will be Ted Dabrowski, our Vice President of Policy, to talk about the pension aspect of this. Ted? John, uh, I'm Ted Dabrowski, the Vice President of Policy at the Illinois Policy Institute. As John mentioned, uh, the state, and we cannot reform pensions, and we cannot fix Illinois if we don't first massively cut the unfunded liability in Illinois. So our plan does that. It cuts it by 50 percent, and that's, that sets us on a, on a path to actually get out of our mess. Uh, any plan that doesn't massively cut the unfunded liability will not reform Illinois. The second thing we must do after we bring that massive uh, unfunded liability down is we must stop the growth of it. We can't let it ourselves get into that same position again. And so what our plan does is it eliminates, going forward, the defined benefit system, and we move towards a defined contribution system. Uh, the, the, the defined benefit plan has been the root cause of the problem in Illinois. Uh, it's uncontrollable, it's unpredictable, it's unreliable, and that's why 85 percent of the private sector no longer uses the, uses the defined benefit plan. So it's important that we move toward a defined contribution plan. Uh, additionally, our plan eliminates the ramp. The Fed famous Edgar ramp has been very dangerous to what's been going on. It pushes all the future um, payments for the unfunded liability into the future where our children, our grandchildren have to pay it down, and it puts the burden on future legislators to try to solve that problem. And I want to take a second and just show you what has happened over the past, uh, uh, past few years from the original Governor Edgar proposal and his ramp to where we stand today. Uh, I'll just draw this for a second. The, the black line on this graph here on my, on my left shows the Edgar ramp 
1994 as it was proposed. That was the plan that was supposed to fix Illinois' problem. Today, that same ramp calculated on today's unfunded liability and the required payments that Illinois has to make is much higher. Today, that same Edgar ramp now requires the state to pay $105 billion more through 2045 than originally proposed. That is a massive increase in the amount of money that the taxpayers must fund to make this pension, uh, pension, current pension law work. Um, so, so we fixed that. Finally, to make this thing work going forward, we must give control of retirements to the workers. We must take it away from the politicians who have created a lot of this mess, and we must put it back in the hand of the workers who can decide their own retirement plans, their own needs, and plan accordingly. And last, uh, an important element of, of any reform plan, it cannot c contain a guarantee. There are Most of the proposals out there contain a funding guarantee for the pension systems. That would mean that funding pensions becomes more important than the money for our, for our children in schools. It would mean that pensions would be more important than health care and more important than our safety and health. And health. Uh, that can't go on. So those are the key elements of, of our reform plan. And uh, any other reform plan should contain those elements. And so uh, we'd be happy to answer some questions afterwards. But uh, I will now pass the mic to Representative Morrison. My name is Tom Morrison. I'm a state representative from the 54th District, which primarily covers the Palatine area in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. I ran for office three years ago on a platform of real, meaningful pension reform. The sad fact is that this state's pension crisis threatens the retirements of hundreds of thousands of government workers, including workers in my district. Even the head of the teacher's retirement system admits the systems could soon be insolvent. It does not have the money to pay benefits to people who have already retired, let alone the thousands who are still working. I promised my constituents that I would work in their best interest to restore Illinois', Illinois fiscal sanity. And I told the public sector workers in my district that I would not ask them to make any pension changes that I myself was not personally willing to make. The key component of this bill, House Bill 3303, is that it decisively moves our state toward a defined contribution plan. This bill reforms pensions in a constitutional way. It protects the pension benefits workers have already earned to date. If passed, the pension formula will simply apply to their current service and to their current salary. But in order to fully protect the benefits that they've already earned, we've got to change how future benefits will be earned. And while we're making those changes, we'll do them in a way that empowers workers with real reform and real control, rather than keeping power here in the hands of the legislative body. By moving away from outdated pension systems, we can take back power from Springfield and give it back to the individual workers. This, combined with the reforms to future pension adjustments and the timing of benefit collection, can reduce our unfunded liability by nearly half. That's nearly $47 billion. By freezing pension credits, the liability and the risks will stop growing into the future. This will let us once and for all end the irresponsible pension ramp that Ted just pointed out and that has troubled our finances for so long. We'll begin to pay down the remaining debt year after year on a level basis, just as we would pay down a mortgage. This payment would be about $4.7 billion. That's what we paid in fiscal year 2012. There will be no ramp, no ever-increasing crowding out of needed government services. This is my ideal pension plan. It's something I've been talking about for the last three years. Now we actually have a proposal in bill form. My goal is to use this initiative to refocus the pension talks on what will work to fix the problems that we cannot ignore. There are other proposals on the table, and what we want to do is influence those to get us closest to a real solution. Illinois does have the worst funded pension system in the nation. Big problems need big and bold solutions. This solution is constitutional. It treats everybody fairly. 
It fixes Illinois' broken budget, and most importantly, it sets us on the path to prosperity. Thank you. Hello, I am Jeannie Ives, and I represent the 42nd House District. I'm here today to support a brighter future for our great state. In 2011, lawmakers in this building passed a record tax hike on Illinoisans. They argued that with more revenue, they could restore fiscal order in our state and pay down the growing backlog of unpaid bills. Their solution failed. That's because Illinois doesn't have a revenue problem, it has a spending problem. The billions in new revenues weren't used to pay down any bills. In fact, the state's unpaid bills grew to more than $9 billion. And hiking taxes certainly didn't repair our state's sliding fiscal position. Rather than implementing real reforms, lawmakers chose to force Illinoisans to paper over the state's problems with higher taxes. And more money still didn't solve the problem. The 2011 tax hike is scheduled to sunset in January 2015, and we owe it to the taxpayers to keep that, keep that promise. Illinois' political leadership needs to discern what government can and should be doing and return to the basics of good public policy, spend within our means, and operate under a balanced budget. These simple tasks are common practice among families and businesses that live and work in Illinois. Asking lawmakers to do the same is a reasonable request. The plan presented here today includes a series of great reform efforts, many of which I strongly support. A plan like this can stop the onslaught of credit downgrades and instead put Illinois on a path toward economic growth and prosperity. The plan achieves the following, balances the state budget, repeals the tax hike in 2014, eliminates Illinois bill backlog by 2016, reforms spending to improve outcomes for Illinoisans. To set the stage for a brighter future, we must start with a stronger balanced budget requirement under which spending incurred during a fiscal year must be paid for with revenue from that same fiscal year. I have filed HJRCA 20, which is a real balanced budget amendment to our Constitution. We must also implement a real spending restraint that limits growth in future spending to the sum of the state's population and inflation. Hardworking taxpayers deserve this fiscal responsibility from their leadership. We can accomplish these necessary things, and we must, in doing so, we will lay the groundwork for true economic turnaround in Illinois. Thank you. depend on government for government services, particularly the poor and disadvantaged Medicaid recipients, uh, children in our K-12 educational system, and of course young adults in higher education. And the third key constituent group, of course, is taxpayers who pay for all of that. I've just suffered two large tax hikes, the 2011 tax hike and of course the payroll uh, tax hike in January of this year at the federal level. That's the equivalent of two weeks of pay that have been taking away, taken away from our state's taxpayers. Thank you all so much for coming. My name's John Tillman. I'm the CEO of the Illinois Policy Institute, and we're very excited to be here with you today uh, to release our fifth annual Alternative Budget, Budget Solutions 2014. And I'd like to thank in particular Representatives Morrison, Ives, and Kay for joining us uh, here with us today to talk about various aspects of this proposal. Uh, tough sledding for the state of Illinois in terms of our fiscal health. For year after year, we've not been solving our problems. What Budget Solutions 2014 does is lay out a framework in which to solve those problems. In putting that framework together, we've focused on three key constituent groups. Those three groups are public employees who receive their paychecks and benefits from a government paid for by taxpayers. The second key constituent group, of course, are people who, so the problems are great, taking a balanced approach is necessary. Uh, we've worked closely with Representative Ives, uh, Kay, and Morrison on these solutions, and we're very happy to have them here with us today and very proud of their leadership, courageous leadership, on these issues. 
In terms of the pension proposal that is part of our overall budget solution, today we're presenting the first pension uh, plan that actually solves the pension crisis. Uh, we reduced the unfunded liability in 2014 by $46 billion, from $101 billion down to $55 billion. We reduced the state's contribution in terms of the annual pension payment from $6.7 billion down to $4.7 billion. That's a $2 billion reduction in terms of the state's pension payment. Most importantly for state workers and government workers in general is that this is the first plan that gives workers control of their uh, retirement earnings going forward by converting them to